walking around the campus, it's a, a number of years since uh, since you walked out through the gates of uh, Stranmillis. What's it like being back and what are the sort of differences that, uh, that you see now from, from when you were here? Well, it's a surreal combination of difference and sameness. Uh, so some things look exactly as they did back then. I graduated in 1983. I started in 78, it took five years because I was a French major and we were required to spend a year in France, so I had to do the awful thing of living for a year in the south of France. Um, and so, so some things look very much the same, the exterior of the buildings, the residence halls look very much the same, but the interiors have changed. And of course the people have changed, although I'm, I'm very pleased that some of the names that I remember are, are names that you all know. Um, in the French department, it was Gordon Skingel, Eleanor Houston, Madame Sibri, mm -hmm. and then in the education department, I, I know names that, that um, Audrey knows very well too, Dr. Turner, Dr. Emerson, that these are people I remember very, mm -hmm. very fondly. And uh, obviously it's been uh, a while since, uh, since you've been back and there's been a, a sort of big journey uh, from yourself, from from Stranmillis to, uh, to Salem. Do you want to tell us a little bit of, of that journey and how you end up from uh, a Stranmillis graduate to uh, you know, a very senior position in, uh, in a United States university? Well, it's, it's been one big adventure. Um, I graduated in 1983 with a degree from Queen's University of Belfast and then I taught French in uh, Movilla High School in Newton Arts for one year. And then I went back to Queens and did a master's in French. And then it was right after that, in 1985, that I left for America. December 8th, 1985, I left for America. I had a job lined up to teach French in a prep school in Virginia. And so that's where my American life started. I stayed there for six years. And then I did it again. I went back to school myself. I, I went to Princeton and, and did a PhD in, in French there. And um, after that, my first job was at Harvard. I was in administration. I also taught French there too. Stayed there for four years. Then went to the University of Pennsylvania. I was a dean and also taught French there. Stayed there for four years. And then I had a craving to go to California. And I had decided that I just had to be in California before I turned 45. So a few months before my 45th birthday, I made it to California. And I worked at Stanford for six years. Um, I was a dean there and also taught French. And then, this was ten years later, then um, Harvard called and said, would you come back? And this was right at the time when I was thinking, California is beautiful, but I really am an East Coaster. And so I said, yes. And I came back to Harvard in 2010. And then after that, I um, came south to North Carolina, and this is my third year at Salem Academy and College. In terms of, we have a lot of students who we send out in Erasmus, we have a lot of students who come in from particularly the uh, United States. Is that something of moving into a different culture and seeing teaching in a different environment, is that important for, for the likes of your students? I, I think it's very important because teaching takes many different forms and, and learning takes place in many different ways and of course everything has changed now from the way it used to be. You know, when I was in Mount Glass Primary School back in the 1960s we had sat in desks with straight rows and, and it's not like that anymore. And, and then when I went to America and when I was in graduate school at, at Princeton, having been an undergraduate in Ireland, it was still a time where we sat in desks and we absorbed whatever the professors were saying. and. And it wasn't really about our opinions of anything that we were learning, it was about us absorbing knowledge. And then I went to the United States and I'm in graduate school at Princeton and, and it's very different. Um, they, they, there's an expectation that you will come to class not just having read the homework, but that you will come to class ready to express your opinion about what you've read. And, and that was entirely different, that was not my experience here. And. Um, and so I had to adapt. I had to adapt to a different form of learning as a student myself, but also a different form of teaching. When I, when I was teaching, it, it wasn't going in and imparting knowledge. It was going in and um, 
eliciting opinions and thoughts from, from the students and listening to those and incorporating those into the, the, the framework of, of the lesson plan, um, which was very different from, from what I grew up with. What do you miss most about, uh, about Northern Ireland? I, I miss family. Um, my family is still here. And um, I headed off on my own in, in 1985 with everything I owned in two suitcases and $200 in my pocket. And um, at, th at that time, I, I think it was, you know, just get me out of here because you never appreciate the place you grow up. And I, I certainly did not appreciate it as I should have. And now, with the eyes of an American tourist, I, I appreciate it much more than I did then. Um, but I miss family. I, I'm, I'm very attached to, to family. Um, I miss the old haunts of you know, where my grandparents' farm was in Drumbanaher. And uh, that's a place that's always top of the list when, when I come home to visit. I always remember coming home. And um, this group of 34 Americans, as we were on the bus somewhere in Donegal, they, they asked me to tell my story. And um, one of the things I said was, was that many Irish people go abroad, but all Irish people come home. And um, no matter how we remember our experiences here, because we were in mm -hmm. Belfast at a very difficult time, um, so, but no matter how we remember it, this is a magnet that, that um, never goes away. Well, it's been an incredible journey from, from Belfast to, uh, to North Carolina, and thank you for for sharing that with us. My pleasure.